Hi, I'm Dr. Jacqueline Levine from UCLA All of You Medical Center in Los Angeles, California. Today I'll be presenting my poster, B3 Wear of Dermatomyositis Mimickers. So this is an interesting case of a 51-year-old female. She initially presented to the emergency room with one week of a peritic rash, initially involving her scalp, but then progressed to involve her eyes, mostly surrounding her eyelids, her chest, and her posterior neck. We were consulted for evaluation of dermatomyositis given the distribution of the rash. On our initial evaluation, she denied any history of proximal muscle weakness, no history of ray nodes, respiratory symptoms, or dysphagia. Um, she also denied any family history of any known autoimmune disease and also denied um, any history of substance abuse. Um, on our initial physical exam, you can see here she had a well demarcated rash um, located over her chest, her posterior neck, with these uh, intermittent scattered hyperpigmented patches. Um, she was also noted on exam to have these red patches with atrophic papillae over her tongue that we initially didn't really know what to make of. Um, of note, on exam, her motor strength was completely intact. Um, her initial laboratory findings um, were notable for an anemia, uh, she had a hemoglobin of 9, a thrombocytopenia, we had no prior labs on file for her unfortunately to get a baseline. She had a mild hyponatremia, some LFT elevation, and then um, she also was noted to have an elevated sed rate. So we initially sent off a full panel of markers, CK aldolase, um, looking for also markers of uh, dermatomyositis as well. However, as this was all pending, her clinical course changed. She subsequently developed altered mental status, hallucinations. Um, at first we weren't really sure what to make of this, so we obtained collateral information from her family who endorsed a strong history of alcohol addiction and abuse. Um, so this clearly changed our differential in the way we approached the case. She was placed on CWA protocol and subsequently improved um, in terms of her altered mental status and hallucinations. Um, however, we broadened our differential to include vitamin and mineral deficiencies. We ended up sending off vitamin B3 or nicotinic acid, which came back low at less than 20, consistent with the diagnosis of pellagra. So that brings us to our topic today, um, which is pellagra. It refers to vitamin B3 or niacin deficiency. It's very rare in developed countries nowadays due to niacin enriched flour. However, it can still be seen in homeless populations and can be seen in patients who abuse alcohol. Um, it typically presents with the four Ds, dermatitis, which is a photosensitive rash that you see here, um, diarrhea, dementia, and even death if it goes untreated. And it can also present with glossitis, which is what you see here as well. Um, the rash located along the neckline is typically referred to as Castle's necklace um, after the founder of the disease and treatment is supplementation over the course of several weeks. Um, we had a few big learning points from this case. The first was the cutaneous manifestations of pellagra very closely mimic those seen with dermatomyositis, so definitely keep it on your differential. Um, and then always obtain collateral information when the patient's uh, clinical picture doesn't fit with her history. Um, thank you so much.